threat of disaster is never pleasant. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. These safety measures are essential. The only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. This will be your source of survival instructions and information. Every member of the family must be coached in the business of survival. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. Is it? Yes, sir. It's well, the beat. Welcome, Cameron, to welcome. the studio. Yes, thank you. How's your day been? Good. Yeah. It's nice, gloomy weather it today. It is, man. We, we've been texting all, about like, it earlier. Low clouds. This is super sweet. Anytime we get this weather, which is very infrequently, <laughs> yeah, we're like texting each other. The same crap. We're just like, over. oh man, yeah. this weather. <laughs> texting each other. Is it the is. Best. It's pretty pathetic. I know it <laughs> is pathetic. Our lives are pathetic. Did you like that rain on your windshield? <laughs> How about them clouds out here? <laughs> <laughs> and we're just I can like reach up and touch them, <laughs> run on my fingers through the cloud. They were really low. Yeah, they were, they? weren't they? Looked kind of like a coastal, like, yeah, northwest. Yeah, every, everybody over there was like, "Why are you interested? I mean, why is that even fun for you? Yeah, every day. Like, yeah. no, you don't understand. Twice a year, you don't we get it. We get it twice a year. We get sunshine all the time. It sucks. It. Dry, dry sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but today we are very excited. Uh, we have kind of a different type yeah. of episode, right? This one, this one took a little more brain power. It sure did. Like, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. more research. I think it's exciting. I liked it. I did. Yeah, this has so, been fun. We're gonna talk about the stages of apocalypse. Yeah, I feel like like in in movies and things like that, it skips some of these like deeper stages it that does. we prepare for. Yeah. So it's like. We're going to go through them. They usually go to stage six right they away. Do. Yeah, they do. The you worst I mean? stage is the dumbest, yeah. least likely to happen stage. Or fifth stage, like one and five or six, like yeah. all the time. Everybody's so just wearing like leaves, uh, loin cloth yeah. like, <laughs> in the middle of Manhattan. <laughs> That's right. Growing stuff down by the uh-huh. river. It's like, yeah. no, this ain't going to It's not cool. But we're going to talk about all the stages, yeah. what to expect in each stage, Um and we're excited about that. We are. We are also excited about Battle Box oh, because yeah. it is oh, the monthly boy. subscription box full of solid gear for adventure seekers, survivalists, outdoor enthusiasts, and casual preppers. This box would probably be great for every stage of the apocalypse. It's got a lot of stuff in there. Yes, sir. Each month, Battle Box sends you the coolest selection of hand picked outdoor survival and everyday carry gear, all valued at far more than what you'd normally pay. You never know what's in the next box, but here's a sampling of what users receive. Received this month the koala tree kachula blanket with hood or poncho. That's pretty cool. Pretty dang cool. How about the wee knife banter folder? I yeah, love that a good wee really knife. Really sweet. Wee wee sweet. A wee knife. It's a wee wee. It's not big. It's a wee knife. <laughs> I do like their knives. Yeah, it's got good stuff. All this badassness starts at just thirty four ninety nine per month. They've shipped over a million boxes and won best subscription box of twenty twenty. Our listeners get a free knife when you sign up at battlebox.com slash casual preppers. Get your first battle box plus a free knife at battlebox.com slash casual preppers. Listener reviews starts now. Yep. Yeah. So yep. this is it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Five stars. Very informative and homosexual. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But they gave us five stars. I guess it's because we're all homies. Yeah, we're all homies. Right? Homies. Kill the sea turtle. <laughs> That's the name. The names on these sometimes. I'm, I'm developing like a 75-year-old man laugh. <laughs> the little wheeze. Yeah, it is. That's nice. Yeah. I like that. Um but yeah, kill thank sea you. turtles. Okay. Kill sea turtles. If you guys Surprise want to be, Apple lets them do that. I know. If you guys want to be a part of this portion of the podcast, go to iTunes, go to Facebook, leave us a five-star review. Make it awesome. It's a mad, mad world. So, Cameron, um, the State Department has urged a rigorous safety evaluation of a proposed joint Russia-China plan to establish a nuclear-powered lunar base within the next decade. <laughs> This literally sounds like Moonfall or something, yeah, you know, one of those uh, bad movies. But it's not a bad movie. It's just bad life. <laughs> uh, it's just how the world is yeah. right now. Yuri Borisov, uh, the head of Russia's space agency, Roskos- Roskosmos, Ro- Roscosmos. <laughs> That's a hard word to that say. That sounds hard. Roscosmos. 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 Um, we make a nuclear plant on the moon, eh? Roscosmos will get it done. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we will make it happen. Um, said earlier this month that the two powers are seriously considering a project to install a nuclear power station on the lunar surface that may one day support lunar settlements. The project, Borisov said, may take place 
uh, somewhere between the turn of 2033 or 2035. <laughs> Somewhere in that Can range. Can you imagine just the moon and all these power lines like going <laughs> yeah, off into exactly. different? Um, anyways, uh, we're a little Probably weary. Probably look much different than Siberia. <laughs> yeah, moon, Siberia. It's white, it's, it's gray. It's yeah. the same. All the same thing. Can't live on either <laughs> So place. tell me this. Mm. If you were to do it on the moon, mm -hmm. not do it, but do the <laughs> power I, plant. I thought about this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be on top. Do the power plant. <laughs> okay. Do you have to cool it? I don't Can think so. Can you just so. let it just, you know, open air? Because it, is know. it space temperature on the moon? <laughs> I don't know. Which is like, what, know. negative 200 and Real cold. Celsius? It's pretty cold. That's why I got to wear them big coats out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the heads well, on. We're already prepared. <laughs> we got jackets with fur on the coat. <laughs> Power plant will be great. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I don't know about that, but I, I would assume that... Um, Cooling would be like as big a problem. like a meltdown, they're like, it's not a big problem, man. Eh? Uh, no one live here. One big place. We'll go other side now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Nothing grows there anyway. What so. half life of radio? Not a bad idea. I just don't know. Well, I don't really want China and Russia be. up there. I don't either. Installing nuclear powered missiles <laughs> yeah, that's pointed true. at Manhattan. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And that's what they're yeah. scared of. It's like, well, what are they going to do with this? Well, it's up not here? going to be just power. That's, mm -hmm. You're right. You know it's what I mean? Be That's the whole problem. For sure. But can you imagine one day, like really, literally looking up at the moon and seeing like lights of a settlement on the moon? Yeah, that would. Be, How incredible that would, be would that be? Amazing. You get out your Zoom telescope zooming in, you can see a little power plant. Yeah. How crazy is that? That'd be cool. It's like Sim City. You know, zoom in and then you see the power plant on the moon. I don't know, man. <laughs> exactly. Would be so cool. But anyways. Weirdness. I guess if they fired a missile, you're like, well, we got a couple days so we can blow that out of the sky. <laughs> I guess we'll just figure something out. They won't see it coming. It's like, <laughs> it's like super slow. Yeah, how fast could they get a rocket from the moon? I think it'd take a while. To here. I don't know. I don't know either. I can't remember. Like, what is it? How what? many days until we can get a shuttle up or a satellite up near the moon? I don't know. I don't, I'm not that smart. <laughs> I don't even know the password to my computer half the days. Okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, how I fast can I make the bath before I crap my pants? <laughs> that I know. <laughs> I know the From time. From experience. <laughs> okay. I got the time down. Yeah. I've got about six minutes before stuff gets weird. Okay? That's pretty good. I yeah. Got, I got a solid like six seconds six before seconds. things get dirty. <laughs> it's hard when it comes on real quick like that. It does. You know? Yeah. Hmm. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so this one, not as exciting, but I thought it was cool. You see, that's not, you say that every time. I don't have good every ones week. about Mad World. Mad, okay. Mad World, okay? All right. You don't so, have, I'm just saying, you don't have to preface it with this isn't as exciting. Mm -hmm. okay. I guess I shouldn't. You I shouldn't. Won't. I'll no. say, this is the best news yes. I've heard in a long there time. There you go. Yeah, you're bringing people's that's expectations true. down that's so true. far. And it's that's like, oh, true. gosh. They're like, let me hit the skip. <laughs> skip 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, and we haven't even gotten into it after they got 30 seconds in. That's true. <laughs> Officials in Fukuyama, Fukuyama. Oh. have asked the public to stay away from the animal, uh, a cat that has reportedly fallen into a carcinogenic chemical, which is orange and brown in color. <laughs> Do not look at the cat when you touch the cat. <laughs> yeah. Don't smell the cat. You. Watch out. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the kitty very bad. Fukuyama City's environmental <laughs> team warned the public not to touch a cat that seems abnormal. <laughs> He's very abnormal. All the cats seem. I've never but seen a also, normal cat. But also said the animal might have died as a result of the incident. The oh. company which owns the factory said the tank had been covered by a sheet, but the part of it had been reportedly <laughs> turned sheet. over. We had the sheet on it. <laughs> I don't know what the sheet happened. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Holy shit! The cat in there. <laughs> Holy shit, the food back. <laughs> the, mail, incident, mail. the incident woke us up. Oh, so woke according to up. the AFP news agency, a company spokesperson person said, the incident woke us up to the need to take measures to prevent small animals like cats from sneaking in, which mm. is something we had never anticipated before. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Hexavalent chromium it ca can cause skin irritation, respiratory pr problems, blindness, and the staff have to wear masks and rubber gloves when working near the substance. Mm. I don't know what it's for. It hasn't even said that. <laughs> but you can see it. See this picture of the cat paw prints oh, yeah. of it running around? Yeah. But they haven't found it. Really? It's They just see paw prints that it fell in the tank, got out, walked into town. Wow. So they, they don't 
they didn't say what this stuff was for. That no. They, they probably put it in our sweet and sour chicken, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's why going, it tastes so good. Bright orange. It makes sense. <laughs> I know, as I'm saying. <laughs> um, it says one of the... Is usually produced. Doesn't say. Doesn't say. Huh, interesting. Can cause cancer, kidney and liver damage, nasal and skin irritation, oh, ulceration, yeah. eye irritation damage. It's probably in my Man, drink. I guarantee it. It's in here. Just petting that cat, and it's like yeah. got all this like pretty kitty. Basically, it's a biological warfare agent. Yeah. That's walking around on four paws yeah, in town. It's probably a, a secret agent from the United States. Yeah, so... You know what I mean? And they just cover it in a tarp with a tarp that it can be folded back, so... Exactly. Anyways, I was like, <clears throat> wow. that's crazy. Can you imagine a town being in lockdown Dude, because a cat is covered in that sounds some like biological a agent? great bee horror movie. I honestly... I, I was going to ask you if you read a book about I that. Because I bet you there is one. And let me think. I mean, there's movies. There's I'm sure a, there's There's a be. book called Cats, or there's a book called Cat Magic. Um, <laughs> the anime series about <laughs> no. Orange Cat? No. Anyways. Yeah, I bet you this, they're going to have a cartoon. It's like, <laughs> and it's like, it turns <laughs> yeah. into like a robot, like, yeah. and alien thing, and then these, and he's got, you know, uh, stars and stripes on him. He's an American. Much. He's an American cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Ah, yeah. Super weird, no? It is super weird, man. That well, was good. See, well, you shouldn't have prefaced that, I but that know. is as good. That was a wonderful story. It wasn't story. really a mad, mad world. That's, it is too. How do you prepare for that? You, I know. You I was like, I was it. trying to think of like, could you imagine being shut down because yeah. there's a cat wandering around with <laughs> orange, <laughs> orange sweet and sour sauce on it? <laughs> Nobody would listen to that <laughs> warning. Like, okay, give me a break. I'll there's... run it over my truck. <laughs> <laughs> my Trump flag will suffocate that stupid cat. <laughs> you know. <laughs> But then you can imagine people around town just like putting orange paw prints everywhere. You'd be like, what the heck? It's probably in the back of my car. That would be the best. You put it on like, <laughs> like up on your car and yeah. stuff. Like, oh no, Ooh. this is bad. Oh man, that'd be so much, that'd be too much fun. I wish that, that would, would be. really happen. <laughs> Gosh. We cover more of our agents than with a tarp. We exactly. keep them a little more safe than that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but today, man, we're, <clears throat> I don't know where the cat fits in the stages of the apocalypse, but it's It could somewhat. have been this scenario. But we're going to talk about any scenario here. Yeah, so we're talking about, you know, when an apocalyptic event happens, and it's not necessarily apocalypse, SHTF type. Anything. You know, yeah. bad event. There's usually stages throughout this event that are pretty um, clear and significant that you kind of know, yeah. okay, here's where we are. Right, yeah. you're not paying attention to those, but yeah. like talking about them beforehand, I think yeah. it's helpful in seeing like you can kind of recognize like mm -hmm. we're getting to this stage now. Yeah, we're getting and to this stage now. By the way, this is all just made up. We just made this stuff up. Yeah, I mean like the the actual stages. Right, they were. This isn't like from everything's a, made up that we do. <laughs> yeah, this isn't like from like a book or some expert. Yeah. We just broke it down ourselves, named them ourselves. <laughs> so, we are the experts We're the here. experts here. So don't be going to try and look this up somewhere because it doesn't exist other than in our Google Notes. Yeah. This is the okay. only time you're going to get this information. This, this so is it. Pay so, attention. So this isn't like anything official from the government. This is no. just the casual preparation. We did. Breakdown. We kind of like we pulled information from mm -hmm. like government websites yeah. about how mm -hmm. they like kind of progress through these stages. But we kind of broke it down too. Each stage is broken down into what the scenario may look like mm -hmm. in terms of a public response, a government response, and the prepper response. We kind yeah. of put that in there too. So let's do it. Yeah. So let's it's like, this. And, and again, this is a, a type of scenario. We don't know what the scenario is. Yeah. Right. Not specific. There's no specific scenario. This is just a general apocalyptic SHTF event, how it happens. Yeah. And so I, I don't want to talk about this too much, but pre stage. This is like before anything. This is homeostasis. This is where we're at right now. This is like everyday life. Yeah. We're in pre-stage. We think, right? Uh, we don't know. <laughs> Could be. In elections this year, so mm, I guess we may maybe be in we're stage in stage one. one. Yep. And so, Cam, let's go with stage one. What is stage one and what what should we expect? Yeah, so stage one, stage one is kind of that whispers of problems. This, yep. There's... There's at this point the scenario is kind of unexplained events and anomalies begin hinting at potential issues. Mm -hmm. News is becoming a little bit more like each channel of news. You got Fox 13 and Fox Fox 13. <laughs> That's the <laughs> local Fox around station. Here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you got uh, Fox Network and all the, the all of them are kind of talking about the same subject. And it's becoming more mm -hmm. of like the main news um, is about but what, it's, what are what these events are, are yeah. kind of happening, but. Not always. Not always, and it's not like 
breaking news. It's not, it's just like no, little exactly. stories nah, 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 of stuff. Nah, 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 yeah, nah, nah, it's no. not that. It's just like little bits and You're pieces. You're just noticing, kind of like right now, like the, you know, the election mm-hmm. year, things sure. are more in focus. But, um, and I, and I'm going to, I apologize ahead of time that okay. I'm going to bring COVID into this because we've kind of sure. seen covid do some of these states like in and now stages. we just got a warning on youtube yeah covid 19 yeah. every time that's true yeah there's a yep look down at the, the warning it's right below us <laughs> it's right there in our hospital in our chart system it's mm-hmm. like anybody's have has covid there's always a pop-up warning i'm like why is that there like oh geez yeah well, i gotta make sure <laughs> yeah but it drives me nuts because i'm like 2019 infection and then it has to come up as a warning yeah, in there so it's like, oh my gosh anyways um yeah. But yeah, the intensity may be changing a little in the, in the news delivery. You know, mm-hmm. maybe it's uh, maybe some of those things are popping into the local news more than you normally see. So it gets you kind of um, wondering, like, is this really a serious event? Is this mm-hmm. something that I should be paying more attention to? It's not very clear at this point. And that's as a prepper. Most people are just exactly. like brushing it off. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, oh, it's just another every news story. day. Yeah, like. Mm-hmm. News. Oh, crap. another cat and some chemicals. I'll get it. <laughs> right. 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 Mm-hmm. Six tornadoes mm-hmm. touched down, same state. Yeah. Normal. Oklahoma. Yeah. Yep. Um, but there's some things, you know, that you may be seeing uh, more news talking about different countries. Maybe there's movement of military or, or you know, depending on the scenario, but you yep. might start seeing some unusual aspects uh, to the news reports and stuff like that. It's like, yeah. mm, something seems to be a little bit more... Um, there's, there's a little bit more uh, concern in these other countries and stuff like that. So, and I'll, I'll talk about that too. As preppers, you're going to be hopefully paying a little bit more attention to some of this to see yeah. just how serious it might be uh, and become. Um, but really nothing serious yet. Like you said, there's no like breaking news reports or anything that have happened at this point. Um, public response, probably none. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in reality, probably. like people, uh, there's so much news and there's so much, um, over hype of certain things yeah. anymore that we've kind of become numb. It's like it's insane. There's a lot numb. of people that probably won't be paying much attention nowadays, and that's a scary thought. It um, is super scary, and I, I think about that in in relationship to it's like the cry wolf, man, like the uh, <clears throat> the alien situation. Some of the, the stuff oh, yeah. that the government has said, nobody cares. Yeah, if that would have been 20, 25 years ago when we were in high school or whatever. We would have been like, what? Yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me? Everybody would have lost We're their minds. A, yeah. You know what I mean? In elementary school, they'd be like, everybody's going to gather around the TV and yeah. watch this event yeah. that is like historical. And now it's like most people don't even read the article. Nope. They don't even care. Nope. How crazy is that? Yeah. And I don't know what the Kardashians that, on? Yeah. I don't even know what that means or how we've gotten here, but I that is a real deal. Yeah. That's a thing. And and that's just another sign of how news is kind of just overblown things so much so yeah. often that it's yeah. kind of like, you know, the boy who cried wolf. It's like, yep. it's not a big deal. So it's really hard to interpret the news nowadays and, and to know what source is actually important. Yeah. Um, but again, there are, there are those and some of us, hopefully preppers and stuff that we're not sure how to take or interpret the news. So we're right. trying to get all the different sources in and. Um, some of us are becoming a little bit uneasy about some of the things that we're seeing. I remember, so mm-hmm. this is where I wanted to mention COVID-19. Do you, do you remember like end of 2019, mm-hmm. um, and 2000, I was, I was seeing videos out of like China and stuff yeah. that looked insane. Like people that scared collapsing. Me. Yeah. Not all of them were real, but I didn't know what, what to happened? think. Like, where did those videos go? What was happening in those videos? Yeah. And why did that not happen later on? Like, I, I still don't understand that. But I remember me and you looking yeah. at like, what is going on? And like guys in biological suits in the streets. I, I was kind of uncomfortable streets. at that point to where I was like, oh, I'm going to pick up some more water and yeah. stuff when I leave the mm-hmm. podcast and studio. Yeah. And I was doing that. And so we're obviously trained a little bit that way, mm-hmm. like our mindset just because of what we do, but uh, and preppers in general. But a lot of people, you know. I, I remember the doctor I worked with too. He's like, I'm going to start buying some, that's when he started buying masks already and stuff like yep. that. So, mm-hmm. but, um, not all are going to respond that way. And probably no. nowadays even less. So like, I don't yeah. think people are going to really respond that much. No. And so, um, <clears throat> but others might be getting a little overly serious and, you know, taking it to the next level and really kind of starting to show the, you know, basically make other people a little bit more uncomfortable. It's like, why are you taking this so serious? Right. I always picture those people like throwing like grain bags in the back of their truck. Like, <laughs> you know, it's Kevin like, Bacon or I something. know this guy is a prepper and he seems yeah. to be really, yep. or he works 
for the government or he works at the, uh-huh. you know, it's like, what, why is he like acting this way? Government response during this, um, probably doing some investigations, gathering more information to hopefully deliver that information to us as a people. Yeah. But um, you never know. You never mm-hmm. know just how serious it is and what they know and what we don't know. Um, they're obviously trying to gather as much clear information to help us um, just in case there is a public Maybe. crisis. Maybe that's Maybe. what they're trying to do. We yeah. don't know. Um, so it's kind of this assessment and um, investigation into this uh, possible emerging crisis and this might be something that's completely unexpected i mean this is if something's building Mm -hmm. that they're seeing if it's you know it could be an emp that's completely unexpected right yeah again all of these stages will not be they're not uniform with for every situation right this is just like we're just saying in general there could be some buildup yep and that's the thing like a lot of, I think a lot of things are going to have some buildup. I think right. a lot of the scenarios mm-hmm. that we talk about are going to have some information a little bit ahead of time. And that might be days, might be a few hours before mm-hmm. or weeks before. But so, yeah. Um, and then uh, as a prepper response during this, obviously we're kind of trying to pay a little bit more attention to the news to see just how serious things might be mm-hmm. getting. The thing I like uh, that we do is like, you have to kind of look at it as if, what if this gets this, like, right. that's why we talk about the scenarios in our, uh, exactly you know, is because we have to look at the news and say, what if this were to happen? We always look at, you know, the worst case scenario and prepare for that if we're not already preparing. It's, it's funny. We just did the episode on Greenland. Yeah. It's very, like, we're looking at like stage one. That stage one was that there That stage for one weeks, was, yeah. Right? It's like, and they're, they're like, talking about it. Is but you have this to, a problem? I don't know. You have to think, like, we're going to watch, an, you know, a meteor hit into the ocean. Yeah. And it's like, I should be doing more than just watching exactly. on TV. That's definitely a whisper of a problem that you should be at least, like, like what keying in on somehow. Like, what if this did miss the trajectory yeah. and hit yeah. one of the states? Yep. Especially exactly. if you're, like, Florida. <clears throat> yep. Um. So, yeah, as a prepper, our response should be a bit more. I mean, we should take it to, like, mm, I should get my plans in place. I should review some of the you know, what I have on hand, what I need to mm-hmm. start building up a little bit more, but nothing like, you're not going to go real crazy here. You're just no. kind of like considering, ah, oh, if this turns out to be bad, do I have the supplies and is my family, you know, or are we, we going to be good for a few weeks to months? And it might even just be a thought. You might not even do anything other than think about yeah. that. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then the next day you might think about it again or yeah. something, but it's not like, oh, every night you're sitting there thinking about it. It's just like, Okay, you're mulling it over in your head. If this did become something, yeah. what if, right? And this always makes me <clears throat> avoid a little bit of the prepper burnout. Yeah, it's like some of this starts popping up. You're like, ah, I should take a look at my yep. stuff. Yeah, for sure. All our stuff's expired. Yeah, <laughs> everything. <laughs> well, been a while. It's fine. But um, but yeah, looking into some of the things like food and water, mm-hmm. your vehicle preparedness. You know, what ifs? Maybe I have to bug out. You know, stuff that we normally do. But this is a good chance to kind of start reviewing it a little more serious. Yeah, and also um. I threw in here too, like if you're dependent on medications, again, like look at maybe visiting with your provider in the next few days, seeing if you can get a refill soon or something like that. And looking at hygiene, you know, TP is gold now. It's always going to be one of those things for, uh, you know, any kind of scenario because everybody made it a big deal during the pandemic. And now it's just going to be something It's always going to be one of the, I honestly think it's going to be one of those things that goes really soon. And- We've, we've kind of all experienced something like that to where some of those staple items are going to go faster to, you know, butter and yeah. bread and all that stuff is going to probably be bought And up most likely more. in this and part that, of It's the, not going to happen It's yet. not going to happen But yet. I'm just saying that's where but you start thinking about that. As a prepper, exactly. That's where you start to consider those things. Yeah. Like, do I need There's to not much happening this? here. The other thing is, um, I, I put it, probably because of that movie we just saw, mm-hmm. but the communication plan... Um, I know that early on we were, I think it actually might've been during the lockdown Mm -hmm. when we started using our radios and stuff and like talking to each other. Yep. But you you know, you just start looking at those things and, and it makes you, I'm a little, I'm kind of following this. I probably should be making sure my plans are set and making sure we've gone through our plan as a family. That would be the, probably the main things with this. Yep. A hundred percent. You're not, you're not feeling the, the, the pressure and the stress about, the town is going to buy up everything. None of that's mm-hmm. ever, it's not really happened at that point, but nope. you're just paying attention to the news 
and making sure you have your plans in place. Yeah, so that's stage one, um, whispers of problems. Then we go into stage two, and this is like it begins, the trigger event, like this thing happens, the right? The best part. This is the best <laughs> part right here. Right at the beginning of this is the best part. So the situation, it obviously escalates, and it ha- there's clear signs of a crisis that's emerging. It's very obvious that what is happening is serious and real. So there's not like this, uh, you know, there's no more wishy-washy speculation. Oh, yes, Something is yeah. happening and we need to uh, pay attention to it, right? We don't know how bad it is yet, but something is happening. So when we look at the government response- This is when you're getting those mm-hmm. alerts or this is emerging news and it's yes. popping into your yep. regular TV mm-hmm. channel. <laughs> exactly. The government response at this, is they're probably going to have an official acknowledgement of the problem, the event, um, and then some initial mobilization of emergency services and probably some public communication of some sort, right? This is where they start to take some real action to minimize, deter, or even stop the event or threat in some way, shape, or form. We don't exactly know what's going on behind the scenes, but they're doing that depending on what the situation is, right? They're going to have those mouthpieces for the government. They're going to be out in full force right away. They're going to be spreading whatever message is best for them um, and for their um, objectives out into all the media outlets and all those entities that matter. Yeah. I mean, you saw this with COVID, right? It was right away they had people out trying to give you whatever, like random ass information, but they were giving you information that they wanted to get out, right? So that's going to be happening. We don't know for sure. Triple mask it. Yeah, just, I don't know. Put a diaper on your face and go out. (laughs) We don't know. Um, This is actually where we might see organizations like FEMA, Red Cross, the National Guard, they might start to be activated and mobilized. It's not like they're going to be out in full force, but there's probably going to be some movement on their parts, again, depending on what situation. Yeah. Is government there. communication to them that it's like, yes, let's get this stuff ready. Let's get thinking about this. And what the government likes to do is they like to build like little specialized teams of government officials, scientists, uh, emergency responders, and other types of experts. They're going to assess the situation. They're going to coordinate response efforts. Specialized team assemble. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> exactly. They're going to start to develop those strategies, and they're going to start to address the crisis here. Um, this is where they might, depending again, I have to, I I don't, I shouldn't have to say this every time, but they might issue an emergency declaration, uh, or, or different types of emergency declarations, either at the local, the regional or national levels. Yeah. This is kind of a thing that grants authority. It grants additional powers to help respond to the crisis, um, in an effective way. Right. So like you said, you can go, I mean, if one city is like right. patient zero. Yes. Then it's like going to emerge sure from state there. to yep. federal. and then Yeah, very, very dependent on what this situation is. And they would begin to mobilize resources like personnel, equipment, supplies, even money, um, sending it yeah. out to where it needs to go to support the re- response efforts and make sure that those essential services that are needed with these crises are out there, right? I mean, this is the hope. This is like what no they kidding. should be this doing. This is how uniform, yes. like this is how smooth it should all go. Doesn't always happen this way, no. obviously. Um, and again, depending on the nature of the crisis, the government might implement containment measures. And so we know this pretty well with quarantine zones, uh, but other things like travel restrictions. So again, we saw that in COVID. Um, enhanced border controls. So this yeah. is this is for any type of crisis, really. It doesn't have to be a pandemic of some sort. It could be anything. No, it could be could North do... Korea is considering firing a missile or yes. they fired one. You know, it's like... Yeah, or there's some sort of terroristic threat or, or something. And so we have to close something's off the Something's about to happen. Yeah. yeah, something's about to or happen. Or happened. Or happened. <laughs> um, the government might enhance medical preparedness. So that would, they would, that would be like increasing hospital capacity. Uh, stockpiling medical supplies, yeah. developing treatment Allowing protocols. Allowing more like uh, televisit stuff to yep. happen. That's- exactly. Um, and um, they might take steps at this point to protect infrastructure. And that's like our critical stuff, like power plants, the water treatment facilities, uh, communication networks, um, all of that kind of stuff would um, they would probably try their best to make sure those things continue to go. I wonder because- what that would entail, because it makes sense like to yeah. protect like Clean sure. water sources mm-hmm. and stuff to continue. I'm yeah. like, would they send yep. National Guard? Or I don't know. It would all. I think it or, would depend, right? I think yeah. it would depend. But they're going to do what they can but to, the, yeah, to protect you, I would that. See that for sure. So now let's talk about the public response in this uh, stage two. Obviously, the anxiety, the fear, it's all going to increase because the, oh, this is actually real. We have to think about this. Yeah. 
people are going to start to do the Wait, things when, that they well, do. Was this happening? I've uh, I, I got work tomorrow. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, going pe- in sick. this is where people start to act a little frantic, start to rush to the stores, yeah. maybe you know, all those things. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. And so they try to do something. Um, that this is where they really become more attentive to those news reports, like right away. Everybody's watching CNN, Fox News 24 7, right? Fox 13. Fox 13, <laughs> right away. <laughs> uh, the social media updates become, you know, they're just frantically checking that stuff for information about the crisis. They just want to know, like, what's happening? What's the severity? What are the potential Im- implications, right? Um, this, I just remember, like, Social media was bombers oh during COVID, right? Like I'm not saying my all kids kinds school. of different stuff too. It didn't even have to do with COVID. Oh, uh, didn't even have to do with COVID. <laughs> a lot of it really. Our didn't tires have to are going to stop being manufactured. <laughs> Wait, go what? buy a bunch of new tires. Yeah, it's the 5G getting into our urine. Oh, yeah, that was right. You 5G know? popped up big time uh, during like that. Stuff will start to go pretty crazy. The Facebook Karens are going to be out in full force. <laughs> doing their thing, right? Um, 24-7 news coverage. Some people will become obsessed with it. Oh, this yeah. triggers like some really weird behavior in people. Yeah, right? this is when, when you're going to get that text from the friend that's like, I have a friend, works in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, it's going to be martial law like next uh, he, next two days. He's not in the government, but he does work at Subway. <laughs> I got uh, that from near like four House. people. Yeah, I know. They're like, listen, yeah. I know a guy that works over, he's in the government. Mm-hmm. Things are going to get worse. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is where people will start taking those precautionary measures to protect themselves, their families, from whatever threat this is. And this is a whole bunch of different things they could be doing depending on the situation. You know, actually starting to wash their hands for the first time in their life, yeah. um, avoided, avoiding crowded places, starting to stockpile essential supplies like food, water, ammo, and meds. Um, just buying everything they buying can. Buying everything like, they can. No, there's yeah. no rhyme or reason to no. it. Like, there's no forethought it's like just it's like chaos. all these non-preppers they're going to start to almost act like preppers at this point but they're going to do some things they maybe should have been doing all along but they're going to start causing issues for everybody exactly this is where exactly. those grocery store shelves start to get picked clean of the essentials and then it's just this snowball effect <laughs> as that starts to they happen. like go down the aisle and they see what's in somebody else's yeah. cart and then they go back and you they must take know like something. 16 more of them cat food must be going out <laughs> we need more cat food exactly i don't even have a cat yeah mine dropped into a <laughs> vat of chemicals i haven't seen it in a week <laughs> right <laughs> yeah um so some communities at this point will yeah, come together <laughs> sweet and sour yeah, sweet and sour <laughs> yeah that cat even getting up in here <laughs> even getting in that chinese liquid um whatever that was um some communities at this point, they're going to come together. They're going to start to support one another. Neighbors checking on each other. This stuff does happen. Like, people do come together yeah. Yeah. at this point. Mm-hmm. This is a good point for them. They're gonna, do you need help? What can we do? All that kind of stuff. Hopefully, that's your community because that's a good place to be. Yeah. Not always, though, but it could be. There could be some economic consequences as a lot of this stuff starts to unfold. Their spending habits get a little weird. Businesses are going to experience disruptions. Markets react to the uncertainty caused by the crisis. There could be shipping issues. Or if, or if it's bad enough, or if the shock of this event is bad enough, you could even see something like a run on the banks. For sure. Start at this yeah, point. Yeah, I definitely can see that. Yeah. Um, and... Again, this is such a critical thing, the communication and the information part. Despite efforts to offer accurate information, there's always going to be that speculation, those rumors, the misinformation. Um, and that's going to lead to more panic and confusion, yep. right? It's, yep. It's guaranteed. Yeah. It's like just, in, in all of these, like a trigger event it. is going, it's going to happen. Yeah. So uh, the prepper response at this point is to pretty much activate your emergency plan, whatever that is. Secure the essential supplies. Push that button. Yeah. Open up that bunker. Establish communication networks with other preppers. So at this point, obviously, the news is widespread. The event, everybody knows about it. Um, Prepper social media will start to go nuts. This is the thing. Oh, yeah. It's not just general, like prepper social media will be out with every conspiracy known to man and this is the end of the world. Well, some prepper porn too, man. Exactly. It's like, yes. We're going to want to, I mean, we did episodes on COVID because it was a hot topic. It's right. like whatever information we had. Mm-hmm. Exactly. This is where your friends will start Get shooting. Get those numbers. Yeah, they're going to start. <laughs> this is where our downloads go nuts. This is where we buy a new car. Yeah. 
exactly. Nah, we, there's not that much money, boys and girls. Um, no, no. But uh, this is where your friends and family will now like be shooting you those messages. What should I do? Uh, should I have a gun on me all the time? Exactly. What kind of food should I eat? You know, all those questions are going to be starting to come in because you're the prepper of the group, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this is where um, they might start to secure your home, gathering essential supplies, communicating with family members. Again, that's a thing that is so critical to have laid out before this point, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, it's so critical. Um, and you would review that communication plan because you need to have reliable methods for staying in touch with your family, your neighbors, other preppers, and to access that emergency information when you need it at this point. So you got to make sure that that piece of it is very, very set in stone, right? Mm-hmm. You know what's going on there. And then this is me to... uh a T you're going to assess your current preparedness level for sure. You're going to identify the gaps and the deficiencies that you've been thinking about for years and haven't done anything about, (laughs) um, whether that's in your supplies or your skills or your plan or whatever it is. And now you're going to be like, I need to address it now. Yeah. Um, and, but then this leads to that next step. You're going to prioritize stockpiling essential supplies like food, water, for sure. Medical supplies. Still available. What what is available? Like, you're going to be a part of the fray, probably. I mean, you maybe not, depending on the situation, but you could be here, right? So you're going to go to the stores, you're going to get your food, your water, your meds, your fuel, your ammo, all the things that you know you're going to need in a long-term crisis Yeah, moving up. So, um, yeah, that's that's a piece of it. And then you're home. You're, you're at home. You're, you're worried about a lot of different things that could happen, and that could be looting. It could be rioting. It could be just like a general lawlessness Mm -hmm. you know i mean i i remember even thinking about that at covid i was like i I, I rarely locked it's like i was locking my doors all the time i I was even locking i want covid walking in here (laughs) yeah that's some (laughs) bitch you're not coming to my house um but uh um i was even like locking my gates to my backyard i'm like why am i doing this because you're just like you're thinking about stuff that you don't normally do yeah so at this point, you probably start to reinforce the security at your home, whether that is, you know, reinforcing doors and windows, fortifying entry points, making any necessary repairs or upgrades, just anything you can do to enhance the safety or security. Time to paint those cabinets. It's time, well, I guarantee you, you're going to be repainting something. Um, make them blend in a little better yeah, so people can't find them. Let's refinish our kitchen table. It's time. <laughs> you know, let's just get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyways, so that's a really good time to do this, but also to evaluate your bug out plan right now. Yeah, exactly. If it hasn't already had to have been put in place, is it time to do so? If not, how can you better prep in case it does get to that point? Yep. Right? So that is stage two. That's an intense um, stage. It begins. That's a very intense stage. This is my favorite stage of all. It the is. Stages. I think it's my favorite right? stage. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good one. It's like you still have, there's still some time yeah. to like get more preps and there's yep. still some time for like, it could, it could go either way. It's right. like maybe it's going to get better. Maybe it isn't. Could, so, but you're in the stage and now you got to deal with it. Yeah. Right. Um, and another thing you have to deal with is the health of your body. Um, and yes, you do. for me, field of greens is the healthiest thing I do every day. And I want you to be on this journey with me. It's literally one scoop a, ga- a day. It tastes great. I love the strawberry lemonade and the lemon lime flavor. I drink it constantly and it really has completely improved my life. This is nutrition the way that nature intended. The biggest difference I have felt is that more sustained, even energy throughout the entire day. And that's that overall feeling of being healthy. Yeah. I feel good. It is weird that way. It. it is very it doesn't weird. have caffeine in it, but you no. do feel like you get a little more spunk. Yeah, it's because Field of Greens <laughs> is radically different. Each organic fruit and vegetable was medically chosen to support heart and vital organ health. We trust Field of Greens to keep us healthy. And I promise you, you're going to love this product. But if for any reason you don't, they're going to give you a 100% money back guarantee. Yeah. And we got you 15% off your first order, plus free Rush shipping. This isn't just like free, like four week shipping from a, on a slow boat from China. Yeah. Right. This stuff is going to get to you quick. Visit fieldofgreens.com and use promo code casual preppers. That's promo code casual preppers at fieldofgreens.com. Your body's your number one preparedness item, guys. Keep it running yeah. smoothly. Try healthy by putting it in your mouth. Mm. It seems pretty easy. It does. <laughs> it's like it really takes it's five easiest. seconds. <laughs> so easy. Yeah. All right, so now we're into stage three. Yeah. This is apocalypse now. Apocalypse this is now. when things have, like, 
few days in or you know a few weeks it's it's bad like mm-hmm. things have gone south instead of you know maybe it's going to get better things are starting to get a little better things have taken a it really, took a hard right turn yep exactly. not a left turn yeah so this is full scale crisis mm-hmm. that's unfolded and widespread chaos breakdown of societal systems mm-hmm. and there's a lot that causes all of this you yeah. know Full board. I mean, it, it, like I, like we were saying, it could be an EMP, an, an invasion, a new pandemic, uh, different things like that are causing, have, have caused this to happen. Obviously, different locations are going to respond in different ways. Like mm-hmm. rural areas aren't going to be hit as hard, but there's also like smaller amounts of food and mm-hmm. grocery stores and stuff like that. So, and support. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. The support's going to be a little better in the rural areas, whereas in the city, it's just total like mm-hmm. anarchy. Um, uh, news might be limited or interrupted. Like it, it, it's broken up. We don't know exactly, you know, what is going on. I always think about, um, what was the movie before Greenland that we watched, um, with Ethan Hunt and all that. I always forget the name. Ethan. Ethan Hawk. Hawk I mean, um, Ethan Hawk. The one. Oh. Yeah, uh, leave the world behind. Yeah. yeah, this is where the plane's dumping a bunch of flyers yeah. to confuse it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we like don't know. this is just where there, everything is just super confused, uh, confusing and. The thing is, the system is not functioning the way yeah. it, it was meant to. Like, police aren't going into work, or there's no police force. Um, there's no one, att- you know, doctors aren't showing up for their shifts at the hospital and stuff like that. Like, everything is just chaotic and mm-hmm. completely uh, messy. Yeah, it's kind of a, a random crapshoot if you're going to get a doctor or not. Like, you exactly. don't know, right? It's just, it's not, nothing works the way that we've lived and, and mm-hmm. understand how it should work. Right. And, and so... And people are just completely in a huge mess. So the public response, fear and panic are at their highest point right now mm-hmm. because that the early stage, uh, stage two, the trigger event, things were still kind of normal and, and you could get food and you could mm-hmm. do, you know, you could start um, preparing a little bit more. But at this point, like the shelves are cleared and you, people aren't going yeah. to work and the news is all broken up and confusing and it's just... The worst case scenario. Um, stores and stuff, uh, when when things are unavailable, that's when panic buying is still happening and rioting and looting uh, of stores and homes is starting to happen at this point. Mm-hmm. These people just don't have, they don't, they don't, there's no hope. <laughs> yeah. You know, and um, trying to get things online or out of stock if there's even internet still. And this is where people start to be start to really depend on family and friends to borrow items that they need. Yeah. There's there's some bartering going on. There's some assessment of food plans that, and people realize that there's some uh, despair now. Like, yeah, you might they even don't feel start, like you might even start rationing. Yeah, at this point, yeah. I would guess they're starting to see that there's there's no end in sight to this uh, event mm-hmm. and. They're starting to think, am I going to die? Am I, is my family going to starve? Mm-hmm. Um, I, is everything, anything ever going to go back to normal? And, and what do we do at this point? So pretty much uh, the darkest part of, I think, any event would probably be right in the middle of it yeah, all. Yeah, for sure. Because you, you're not, and we'll talk about stage, uh, stage four, um, where you're kind of like into it now. It's like mm-hmm. things have changed at this point. It can go any way. Um, and it's really hard to adjust. To this. Oh, it's not easy. The public is not, yeah. they don't do well with this. This is where the most people will probably die. Yep. You know? So, and you're going to see, you know, suicides, you're going to see, um, uh, like looting and stuff turn into like hostile civil, uh, what are the civil, um, unrest, the unrest. <laughs> okay. well, I wanted to say civil defense like five <laughs> times, but yeah, sure. you're going to see, um, people harming other people and yeah. breaking into homes and stuff like that. That's how, um, Desperate people are at this point. Government response. So uh, coordination efforts here. Government agencies at local and state and federal levels will coordinate their efforts to respond to the crisis. They've started doing that in stage two. Now they're really trying to implement it, but there's shortage of people. Yeah. There's shortage of supplies. It's it's so spread out and so widespread that they can't address problems in all these areas. It's yeah, impossible. This could be, uh, you probably, like communication is going to be tough. Yep. But yeah, you know what communication I mean, um, which slows everything down. They're going to try and communicate information about the crisis, including mm-hmm. safety measures, evacuation orders, resources available to the public. But it's not going to get to everybody, mm-hmm. and it's also going to be very confusing. And people are going to, like you were saying, they're going to feel that the government's either abandoned them or they're part of this whole thing. Yeah, and so it's just a huge mess for the government to get anything done. Um, 
I see more at this stage, maybe national guard and mm-hmm. martial law being implemented yep. um, to try and, you know, bring peace to these cities and try and keep order, but it's not going so well. No. Um, the other things is like, there might be items like mandatory vaccines and mm-hmm. proof of vaccination and stuff like that, that people are going to push against and, and have even more trust issues with the government if they're forcing people to do things. People don't like that. No, they do people not. People do not like they to do be not forced like it at all. and ordered to do things. And it's it'll be that way in, in different forms. Um, hospital triage ramps up. You know, you'll see outdoor yep. tents. It's just, it's not going to be the system that we're used to. Um, you're going to be trying to find health care in a tent by the hospital that may not even be covered by anybody that has medical experience. You got one PA in there. It's like and a janitor that's worked in the hospital. Exactly. <laughs> And so um, the government's doing its best at this point, but it's exhausted. Yep. It's not able to address all the issues that are happening during a full-on apocalypse. So um, prep response. At this point, um, you're implementing your full-scale survival plans. You have your, you're either bugging in at this point and you've hunkered down and you're planning to stay in that location. You're fortifying it. Um but you're also like looking at scavenging and trying to add to your supplies if you're in that situation. So you got to practice some gray man. And so um, this 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 um, stage, stage three, four, and five. This is where I feel like most preppers are like dreaming of. Yeah, like yeah, not me, but a lot of preppers are like, this is it. I'm gonna, this is probably know, yeah. You know what I mean? This is the stage that you're living a full on prepper life that you yes. prepared for the whole time. Exactly. Stage yeah. two was like the start of that, uh-huh. and so there's a lot of like crossover here. Mm-hmm. But this is when you're like, I'm going into the city with someone else to scout it out. Yep. Going gray man. I don't want anybody to follow me back. Yeah. You know, you're you're keeping an eye on. You, you have full on situational awareness at any moment's notice. You're going to bug out if your bug out plan is your main. Yep. Uh, or if your bug in you plan might is be compromised, out. yeah, you might even already be bugged out at this point. Yeah. Um, you're maintaining a low profile. I mean, you don't want to bring in more. You don't want to be taken care of more. Hopefully, you know, you have a collaboration with trusted preppers, networks, mm-hmm. or neighbors that are all kind of all on the same page. That's the best, that's the best case scenario there. Right. But it's probably, you know, no one listens to us. So <laughs> no. there's no prepper network. No, there's not, not much. But there's communities that have a lot of other things that, um, you know, I, I remember when I was in Logan, I can't remember what was going on when we were first married, but it was kind of like a sending people around to check on each other mm-hmm. and stuff like that was starting. That was yeah. like, that was more of like stage one, stage, stage one, two stage stuff. two. Yep. But I think more of that would kind of come into play in smaller rural areas. People will kind of come together a little bit more. You hope, you would hope um, so. Bugging in is most common, like I was saying. So you're really, you're really um, protecting your home. Probably boarding up windows. You know, isolating any entryways. Having a, a good defense plan. Um, on watch. Probably have weapons yeah. and stuff ready. Like because everybody is desperate. You know, um, running out of food. Uh, desperation and dis- is just getting the worst at this point. Yeah, and this is where like those firearms. Probably so as preppers, do you come really, in yeah, to exactly. Play more Your defense yeah. plan here is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, city preppers, if I mean, if you haven't already bugged out at this point as yeah. a prepper, you probably um, should bug out right with your family um, because those those like heavily densely populated areas are just going to get worse the longer this goes on. Yeah. Stage so, three. Stage three. Gosh, that one's dang. that one's uh, apocalypse yeah. now. Wet dream stage. It really is. And let's go to stage four. We call this one just survive yeah. because look, society it's in disarray. Survival basically just becomes your primary focus every single day. Uh, society's collapsed. The rule of law is largely non-existent here. This yeah. is like not much. <laughs> there's no law enforcement. Anything could happen. Anything to you. could happen. Yeah infrastructure has basically crumbled basic services there might be some here and there but they're super scarce communities are left to fend for themselves like we're talking no internet probably probably no power or maybe it's intermittent yeah. right uh, no running water or gas no fuel no emergency services all those things are just pretty much gone and there's really no official communication of any kind at this point either with all of that gone how are you getting information about the world at large or, or things that are happening because you have no news outlets that can get you information it's not like people are still 
printing a paper and you weren't reading a paper no. anyway. So half of us can't read. Um, there's no internet anymore. Um, there's just n- not much in the way of any government information either because they're in complete disarray. Um, resources such as food, water, fuel, medical supplies, they're limited. And those are like gold at this point. Mm-hmm. And that's like everybody's primary focus, right? Finding and securing these essentials becomes that daily struggle for survival. Um, with Again, with the breakdown of societal norms, individuals and groups resort to desperate measures. Like Cam was saying, this is why the security is so important because yeah. – you know, if you didn't prepare or if you don't have the skills to to procure food in other ways, you're just going to try and take it from people. Yeah. And this is where people get crazy. Right? I think, like, of the stages, this mm-hmm. is the worst stage. Yeah, this is the worst. Because it's close enough to when things were normal. Mm-hmm. So people still can't adjust to it. Yep. And they're not used to the ones that are still around. Yeah. They they, yeah. they can't cope with it. They like can't. It's tough. And so, and, and then... As like as a prepper, like being without all of these things would Ugh. be super miserable. It'd be horrible. So it's like right? those that have survived and have done, had a, a preparedness plan, I think, um, are going to be super uncomfortable in this. Mm-hmm. And then the ones that aren't, man, it, they're just skin and bones. <laughs> exactly scraping for whatever they can. Yeah. And like this is where looting, violence, conflict—it's just everywhere. This is Mad Max. This world. is Mad Max. Dangers. It, it, those attempting to navigate the apocalyptic landscape communities will probably become super isolated and super fragmented and l- obviously limited co- cooperation between groups because trust is such a hard thing to find at this point because it's one for all yeah you, know you I mean? don't know it's you're letting someone in that could be just recon for exactly. another group yeah. or something. So, and then we look at the government response. Um, at this point, the government's authority, it's basically nil. They don't exactly. have much going on with little ability to enforce laws or to provide support to the population. Some agencies might continue to operate maybe on a local level, but obviously their capacity, their authority. It's going to um, probably be like some of the bigger cities that have yeah. a few of these supplies or yeah. this few of these tents still set up, but you're Maybe. not going to see it. But even in smaller cities, there might be some that were able to stay together better because of the, That's the true, low though. population and and probably just being smarter. You know what I mean? Just, you just feel like out here in this rural area, people have a really good head on their shoulders a lot when it comes to getting through situations yeah. like this, you know? So you, you just don't know. Emergency services, obviously, they've already been overwhelmed. They're not going to be able to respond effectively to any wa- widespread chaos. They might not even be functioning at all at this point. Right. Probably no not. No one running the switchboard. Nobody. Um, you might have some FEMA-type camps here and there that, you know, popped up in uh, stage three or something, but they're going to be pretty sporadic and they're going to be barely working. Yeah. And it's like, they're going to be a scary place to be most likely. Yeah. At this point, the government's primary like the division, if you've ever played it, yeah, it is it's like going to look kind of like that. Yep. The government's primary focus is on its own survival. Um, and, and it's of those key officials. So the guys at the top, right. And it's not going to be providing assistance to the general population. They're just going to be try. This is like where cog con- continuation of government comes in. Right, we had an entire episode on this. They have plans for this very specific situation that they keep themselves running. Yeah. That they keep um, some sort of hierarchy that will get through a, a bad situation like this and come out on the other end because they don't want to lose power. No, nope. you know what I mean. Mm-mm. So uh, they don't care about you at this point. They just care about keeping them moving forward. So that's where that's what mode they're in. They're in cog mode. Um, public response here um i mean you know hopefully the communities are going to form some sort of mutual support you know this is where survival instincts become sort of paramount to anything else individuals and families they're really just focused on survival prioritizing finding food water and shelter and it comes whatever it takes very basic existence at this point right um some people are they're going to adapt to this crazy apocalyptic world they're going to have those survival skills that they didn't they're going to develop them because if you don't, Those you're dead. homesteaders, man. Uh, homesteaders are going to be doing fine. They're going to be loving it. Churning butter and knitting underwear. It's like nothing <laughs> happened, right? Knitting butter, churning, churning butter, underwear. Churning underwear. <laughs> That's how you got to clean it. You use a churner. <laughs> Gives a little flavor to that butter next time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, uh, some people will band together with like-minded survivors, you know, small survival groups or communities because they're going to know that, hey, we got to 
we have strength if we're in numbers and this yeah. is, comes back to like walking dead stuff and you know, all those types of things where the, they band together and yeah, there, there's a mayor of a city, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, but again, trust is very, very low interactions with strangers are approached with high caution because of the threats and, and the potential danger here. Um, so, but if you're a prepper, um, you know, you're going to be drawn on your stockpiles of food and water and meds, um, and, and all the other essential things that to get you through this crisis, you're going to be utilizing that right at this point, you're going to be fortifying your shelters even more, you know, super defensive positions to protect against all these threats from looters, raiders, and, and other hostiles, um, bugging out may have happened depending on what the situation is already at this point, but you could still be hiding at home and bugging in. So very much depends. You're going to be doing some bartering, maybe trading with other survivors, exchange, exchanging goods and services, because at this point, your money's no good. We've gotten past the point where uh, probably cash, they don't even care about cash anymore, right? You're going to be, it's going to be in barter mode Yep. at this point. So uh, that's why you have to have bullets some, and butter, bullets and butter <laughs> and underwear, right? Um, Ziggies. And, Ziggies. Ziggies. Ziggies going to yeah. be in there. Um, some preppers might extend assistance to others in their community, you know, offering the support and resources, but it's probably going to be pretty limited yeah. with that. Um, and then you're going to be starting to look at what are my long-term strategies to, to be sustainable here? You know, exactly. do I need to consider... Uh, farming and, and ranching and yeah. all that other stuff to uh, or renewable energies. There's a lot of different things you're going to start to consider here in stage four. Yeah, and that's a whole nother like yeah. thought of you have to bug out because you can't grow downtown. Right. It's like I've sure. got to get up into the mountains mm -hmm. and somewhere that's, you know, more fertile. Fertile. <laughs> so yeah. stage five is a pretty unlikely scenario, mm -hmm. but it's still a possibility. Yeah. So this is more rare than the other scenarios. This is like the long haul. Like the long things haul. have been going on for months to years mm -hmm. at that at this point. Um, prolonged period of survival, adaptation, and resource scarcity. Um, society, basically, as you know, it is gone. It's dead. And so yep. kind of a new society is formed at this point. Um, those that weren't either have either found a community or a group i mean they're gone mm -hmm. this is like 90 percent of the population's wiped yeah and so it's a it's it's a whole different like landscape and everything um there's no jobs you know yeah. there's tr there's trading and bartering going on like you were saying there's there's really not cash may have value to burn but, That's about it. But yeah, it's there's no currency or anything like this. And this could be, I mean, this could be global or it could be national. It, it's hard to say. Um, no power, no public service. Um, but people are creative and, in, you know, innovative. And so yeah. these groups have started to form like working communities with little um, little tasks and jobs is like, you know, you're assigned to watch over the inventory for a week and then mm -hmm. you're, and so it, this looks like the last of us or yep. revolution or fear of the walking dead. You know, mm -hmm. these are the parts of the apocalypse I find a little boring. Yeah. I, I get bored with this too, Yeah, but I, I get it. Some people love this piece. Of yeah. It. Cause this is like a whole new life. Mm -hmm. This is like whole new uh, communities and people that have come together and um, the public res response, obviously um, those that haven't adjusted are gone. Like yeah. they, most people have adjusted to this life now. Um, they're starting to develop sustainable practices, victory gardens, mm -hmm. and um, they're all kind of cooperating and working together at this point. Um, there's still some anarchy and bandits and marauders, but most that um, are in these communities are protecting themselves from that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. There's probably not going to be huge groups of this mm -hmm. i wouldn't think there could be but most likely you're going to run into small little groups but most of the bigger communities are going to be better people um the government response if it's still there um yeah rebuilding infrastructure if it can and decentralized governance um so there's some power maybe in different areas and stuff like that there may be parts of the military still functioning um, in larger areas and stuff like that. But yeah, it's really like, hard to say. It like isn't. like you said, very decentralized, just kind of spread out, sporadic. Exactly. Nobody really knows who's in charge half <laughs> yeah. the time, right? Or it's a different group of, like, yeah. you know, like the, what do they call them in The Last of Us? It's like the... Um, oh, yeah. Fireflies. Fireflies, the, yeah. yeah. Yep. So there might be those types of little governing bodies. Mm -hmm. 
Um, prepper response, uh, response on this, um, continue sustainable living practices, contribute, contribute your skills to the community. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's going to be different skills that are used for different, like I'll probably be in some tent taking care of all these different weird skin conditions yeah. because everybody's living off from the grid. And, and I'll be trying to put together some sort of a podcasting You'll be broadcasting uh, <laughs> news and stuff to anybody around. Yeah. Just anybody yelling, surrounding. Reeling, come yelling to real loud on a tower. <laughs> That's all I've got. Yeah. Um, Jokes don't translate very well when you're yelling. No. You know. But and the, and the uh, local dentist is the mayor yeah. of the community or he, the governor of the community. The world. <laughs> He owns the earth at yeah. this point. Yep. Um, <laughs> the dental, the American Dental Association now runs <laughs> the entire world. <laughs> exactly. <You know? laughs> Come to us. The nice our... thing is everybody will have really good teeth, even in this yeah. stage. Great teeth, but you're going to be serving the man. Oh, you're yeah. going to be bringing in any substance to make a, oh, a crown. Yeah, it's just <laughs> melting down any metal <laughs> to, for fillings. You know, just collecting teeth off from dead bodies to be used as like (laughs) dental replacements. Man, it's gonna be a tough place to live. It is, but we're all gonna have a nice smile. But yeah, so um, the very long term scenario is a hard one for any of us to like imagine or even Mm -hmm. prepare for. But it is. This is where it's it's gonna be. Like I picture those like um, what was that on The Walking Dead? What was that big? town they had for a while Um, yeah i don't remember anyways um that's what you that's what i picture is like everybody kind of has a job Mm -hmm. there it's not to earn money it's to stay alive and get the community functioning so yeah so that's stage five there's some there's some cool stuff about that i mean i say i I always talk about it being like a nightmare and there could be some good stuff at this point for sure everything's kind of calmed down but it's a whole new life yeah um that was stage five now we're at the last stage which is stage six and that is post-apocalypse right the scenario i mean in this scenario a new normal has emerged societies are rebuilding from the ashes of the the craziness that is that has happened right yep. the government really they're trying to like reestablish some sort of a government at this point but it's again it's post-apocalypse we don't know what's going to happen with a government hopefully somebody's going to reestablish some sort of yeah. government but we just don't know and then the hopefully pu- every four years there's yeah, you know I just, we got a new please <laughs> two-party system please <laughs> you know got my fingers crossed yep but uh, i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this stage because it's just not as interesting to us right in, in so far out so yeah, like yeah and very unlikely more the this most is like unlikely. rebuilding a new america exactly yeah um so as far as the public goes in this post-apocalypse you know some people are going to be optimistic most people are just going to be tired and wary of the whole situation but they're going to be trying to rebuild and learn from past mistakes at this point. You know, it's they've gone through it all. Yep. And now they're the ones that lived, and now we've got to restart and rebuild, and who knows how long it's going to take before we get a damn iPhone again. <laughs> it works, right? Mm-hmm. It's going to be a while. Decades beyond yeah, decades. Yeah, it's crazy, just a yeah. full restart. Yeah. And then uh, prepper response, you know, obviously they're going to participate in the rebuilding process. They're going to contribute to the development of all this kind of stuff, you know, preserve the lessons learned for future generations. Again, um, that's what it's going to be. And Cam's put some extra notes in here. I don't think I'll put those in. <laughs> yeah, but, don't read that. Um, uh, that's, that's stage six. And then again, it, once you get past that and everything is back again, then you're back to the pre-stage, the homeostasis. And then it's a, it's a rinse cycle. and repeat. It's a rinse and repeat over the It's millennium. pretty crazy that it kind of is, though, like yeah. um, the fall of Rome type of stuff like that. Yeah. It's just like, and then it repeats. But again, some apocalyptic events will not hit every stage. Sometimes it ends at three, sometimes at four, sometimes it's just one, and then it moves back to exactly. homeostasis again. But it's just an interesting thing to consider. It right. is. It's kind of, I mean, this is essentially a scenario podcast. Yeah. Right? Or scenario, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. episode. Yeah. But, but good yeah. stuff, right? Anything else I think on so. That? No, okay, no. Good. I think that totally, I know exactly what to expect now. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to go through these stages, though, like one of the most important things is staying hydrated. Oh, yeah. Like there's nothing worse than going through stage four of the apocalypse and having headaches and cramps and fatigue and weakness. But we know how to prevent that. That's be gold. Yeah, it's exactly why we teamed be up for this with our friends at Element. Right? It's a tasty electrolyte drink mixed with everything you need and nothing that you don't. It's perfect for bug out bags, for EDC kits, because it contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio: a thousand milligrams of sodium. 
200 milligrams of potassium and 60 miggies of magnesium, baby. <laughs> um, casual Preppers listeners can get a free element sample pack when you make any purchase through our exclusive Casual Preppers link. That's one packet of every flavor every time you order. And that's pretty dang cool. That is. They also offer a no questions asked refunds on every single order. You don't even have to send the stuff back. Um, and my favorite part is that you can get it on your first time and your second time and your so 100th nice. time. As long as you use our link, you're going to get that free sample pack. But you got to go to our link, and that is drinkelement.com slash casual preppers. Drinklmnt.com slash casual preppers. It's time for the quick and dirty medical tip. All right. So. This just got me thinking a little bit about uh, medical, like medical goods and medication storage. I mean, that's because, a great idea. You know, yeah. you want it to last as long as possible. You do. You know, you don't want that ibuprofen Mm-mm. to move into stage four at least. Oh man, yeah, please. <laughs> it's like my only wish. <laughs> so, storing your medication. Obviously, the the most common and basic thing is stored in a cool and dry place. You know, yeah. you don't want your medicine wet. And you'll want to hot. I like to hot and wet. wet a little bit. No, it wants that. <laughs> I, like, I to, like it to slide down. I like my pills a little soggy. <laughs> That's how they're good. But most medications should be stored uh, at room temperature. I mean, yeah. all of these that you're using as a prepper are storing for um, possible future use. You want to yeah. keep out of direct sunlight. You want to keep away from moisture. Mm-hmm. You want to keep them nice and cool. So the basement's a great place. Yeah. Um, Keeping the medications in their original containers. This is, I know this is a little hard because some of those containers are bulky like that. Ibuprofen 600 um, pill bottle that you yeah. get from Costco. Yeah. It's a big container. Yeah, but, but if you save it, then it could be like a gallon of water <laughs> later on. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. With a little debris a little, yeah. of ibuprofen Ooh, in it. baby. It's like the best. It's a spicy water. <laughs> you know? It makes yeah. you feel good after. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> this is awesome. My joints feel great. Man, that's not a bad idea. That's it. Ibuprofen infused water. <laughs> he sounded like on Back to the Future. <laughs> I know. I like the sound I of like that. I like the sound of that. Maya Goldie Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but yeah, so, yeah. um, but the thing is keeping them in their original containers, one, mm-hmm. those orange bottles that you have prescription medication in aren't just to give you a warning, like <laughs> this is possibly dangerous. Yeah. Uh, those orange bottles block out UV light and yep. that's what degrades medications faster. So keep them in that. Also, there's expiration dates on yeah. the label and the directions are on the label. So yeah. it's important. You never know, you know, if you're in stage six, your kids are trying to figure out how to take this medication called ibuprofen. Yeah. They at least know how this to read. This is a suppository. I haven't learned how to read. Yeah. <laughs> um, ne- the next thing is, you, this is the hard thing too, is check your expiration dates regularly. Yeah. Um, medications do, most medications, this is not medical advice, but they no, do tend to go beyond the expiration date. Yeah. Like I'm not going to throw out ibuprofen if it's five years old. No. It's not toxic. Yeah. It's just the 200, probably now 20. The Advil pills still taste good the yeah. outside. <laughs> yeah. And there's some psychological effect there. There like, is. I took ibuprofen. Yeah. My cut off arm's going to be all right. My cancer don't hurt no more. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? But yeah, they're like very few medications yeah. turn toxic. The, mm-hmm. They just degrade. And mm-hmm. so you're you're only taking half the amount at, you know, sure. depends on how long you've sorted. So double your dose. That's what your medical advice oh. is. <laughs> <laughs> so just assume, <laughs> just assume it's lost. <laughs> you need you know, four, four times, times the of pot- yeah. potency. Yes, yeah, this so is not medical. Instead advice. of taking four ibuprofen, you're going to take sixteen. Now. <laughs> this is a joke. Do not do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing is you want to continue to keep medication out of reach from those children's and pets. And so, like, hey, yeah. when my dog gets my aspirin. <laughs> <I know. laughs> <laughs> what you eat the aspirin again? <laughs> Stupid. That dog mutt. gets after that doxy every time. <laughs> he loves that stuff. Drives me nuts. Mm, and that pink, pink, uh, <laughs> see, or what is it called? I get uh, moxicillin. Mm, yeah, he loves yep. It. He licks that stuff right mm. up. Thinks it's milk. He does. But um, you still want to focus. Like yeah. a lot of times, people will just store their medications up on a shelf or in like a regular box. Like you still want to put it in something oh. that's. I've been putting mine in children. my kid's nightstand. Is that a bad place? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. In with their toothpaste <laughs> yeah. and all that. I, they have Tic Tacs, and then I just put a bunch of pills in there, too. <laughs> Is that just bad? mix them together. <laughs> it's uh, like a little same, scavenger uh, That dispenser is really nice for that ibuprofen. One, that's not a Tic Tac. Orange, <laughs> orange, and then kind of a reddish. Yeah. That's good. Exactly. Um, and then there are uh, storage instructions on those bottles, sure. too. Try and follow those. It's pretty much the same thing. Keep it out of sun. Keep it... 
dry. Keep it out of your sun. Keep it out of your sun's mouth. <laughs> um, avoid excessive heat and cold. Rotate stock. Secure your stockpile. Again, um, medication storage boxes are important. Like I, I, I got like a military first aid box that kind of locks up. Um, mm-hmm. It's good to keep those medications away from, you know, prying hands. Yeah, yeah, dogs. Nice. Your, your dogs. And your dogs. And yeah. your, you want your chemical salamander cats. getting in there. Your chemical cats get in there. You never know what. It <laughs> Hamster can make. chew a hole right into that bottle. Especially if he's got hands. <laughs> he'll get right in there. He'll get that child log <laughs> off, I'll tell you. Hamsters. If not, by, he'll chew right through They're it. They're known for it. But yeah, um, it's important to store your meds uh, properly. Yeah, and, I like that. Yeah. It's great stuff. Don't follow the direction of the four times the amount. <laughs> do not. <laughs> um, we do have the latest battle box, Cameron. Yeah, we Are yeah, we excited? We Mission excited. 109. I like the variety in this box. I do box. too, man. Lots of good variety. In the basic box, we have the Wildland Poison Ivy Wipes. Oh. Yeah. So they are poison ivy? I yeah. don't want to wipe that you on You get me. it all over your crotch right away. Pretty much develop immunity if you just <laughs> yeah. wipe poison ivy on exactly. it. Exactly. No, it's for when you get your poison ivy, you you wipe it and oh, it goes that's away. Cool. Apparently, never like had that. poison we'll ivy. Throw that in the camper. Yeah. And then we got the rapid rope mini. Love these little r- rapid oh, ropes. Dude. Yeah, they're cool. My tarp that's um, on my RV is all tied down by these. Oh, yep. They're so nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, it is. Nice. Then we got the hot snot fire starter. Oh yeah. Yeah, a little hot, hot snot. snot. Looks like remember the gum that used to come. It was like, you'd squeeze it and then eat it. <laughs> yeah. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. It's not gum, though. Don't put it in your mouth. It starts fires. It does look just like that, though. Yeah. It's like... And it would like almost like foam. It's kind of a pale appearance. Yeah. It, it's not transparent, right? Yeah. It, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. it didn't ever really turn to gum. No. It, you would chew it for it a minute. It was like, this is old toothpaste. <laughs> and it would dissolve. And Easier then, to swallow, though. Yeah. And the last item in the basic box is the Silva Tracking Animal Tracking Flashcards. That's a That pretty way sweet. you and your wife can do a little studying. About the animal track. That's pretty cool. Yeah. This one right here says, how to track a female in heat. Yeah. <laughs> Take off your shirt. Tell them you listen to casual preppers. Oh, my wife's going to get mad at that one. Will she? I hope she will. It's okay, listen. Tony. It's all good. And then we go to the advanced box. joking like that. <laughs> I don't like funny stuff. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Any hint of sexual stuff, <laughs> yeah, she know. gets mad at me. Advanced box. We have the Holtzman neck knife. Oh. Ooh-wee. Where's you put that, that sucker around your neck. I don't see it. It's big. Oh, it's this one. Yeah. You put this around your neck. <laughs> you don't. No, you take it out of the package first. <laughs> Cigar box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Then we go to the pro box, and we have the koala tree kachula blanket with hood poncho. Kachula. I, I always love a good blanket. I like this kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. You want to give me something? Give me a blanket. I'm happy. <laughs> Yeah, I love the Kachula. <laughs> yeah, the Kachula. And then in the Pro Plus, Knife of the Month, we have the Wee Knife Banter Folder. Man, it's in like a full yeah. Dillard's gift box. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Exactly. <laughs> uh, exact- Dillard still exists. I Yeah, I think it does, actually. <laughs> I think it I'm does. I used to get my uh, like cologne? church pants and stuff oh, there. I got my cologne there. A cologne. <laughs> I didn't really buy cologne very often. Uh, I, had I a thought couple. it was. I was, thought it was important at did, one time. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. And then you just wouldn't shower and mix. What it cologne with your- did you like? Well, um, I'm trying to remember. I I was weird. I actually had some CK one. Oh yeah. That was the yeah could go for go boys or girls. <laughs> remember that. <laughs> <laughs> when you were figuring things out, yeah, I was just trying to get uh, have my head on straight. Um, but cool that one. helped me. Yeah, CK um, one. What was the other one? Oh, like Aspen? there was like a, a luck. No, lucky. <laughs> the lucky cologne. Yovana Musk. <laughs> no, lucky. Remember? Oh, that? I remember lucky. Lucky yeah. brand uh-huh. um, cologne. I had some of that yeah. stuff too. I think I had Hugo. I Boss. still have it somewhere. Hugo Boss. Hugo had Boss. Some good stuff. Yeah. And then um, Elsha. Look. Uh, <laughs> so my dad. The cost. Yeah. Oh yeah. My dad had Elsha. On there? Remember Elsha? <laughs> I don't remember. Elsha. Or um, he had the like the, the old school Old Spice in the white bottle with the oh, little yeah. <laughs> with the little cork top thing. Oh yeah, yeah. It sounds like chemistry, like very know. nice. Yeah, I still remember buying this real expensive bottle that somebody's like, "Oh, it's one of the best perfumes for a girl." Yeah, she's like, "Thanks." Is it, it was like it looked like a potion bottle? But oh really? I'm like, wasn't good. Now that I think back about it, I'm like, what a terrible gift. Yeah. Here you stink. <laughs> Put this on. Might as well. I thought it was buy romantic. me deodorant. Yeah. I was like in element, like now elementary school. I was in middle school. Middle school. Elementary school buying perfume. Man. You were like a baller. Can't tell you how many tea I pulled to get that money yeah. to buy that <laughs> lotion. 
Or that lotion, that uh <laughs> <laughs> lotion. That was for me. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't gonna like that one. <laughs> Can you give me that back? I meant to give you this. Never mind. The lotion's for me for later. <laughs> I'm going to get moisturized, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I got some dry skin. <laughs> I really hope my wife didn't listen to the last part of this. <laughs> She's already turned She'll it off. She'll be so mad. Point. Um, all right, guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate y'all. Stay survived. <laughs>